Welcome back, chemists. As we've been going through the lessons together, you've probably been noticing some patterns in these chemical reactions that you've been balancing and writing formula equations for. And believe it or not, a lot of our chemical reactions can, can really fall into one of five categories. And so that's why we're going to spend the rest of this unit focusing on the patterns in chemical reactions. And today we are going to start with looking at the patterns of synthesis and decomposition. By the end of this video, you should be able to identify synthesis and decomposition reactions and predict the products and words for synthesis and decomposition reactions. So the types of chemical reactions that we're going to focus on today is, like I said, synthesis and decomposition. But there are all actually a total of five of them. So the other um, three that we're going to be looking at a little bit later on will be single replacement, double replacement, and combustion. So today, we're going to predict products for synthesis reactions. You can identify a synthesis reaction because you usually it will have two elements that combine to form a compound. The common form would be an element plus an element gives you a compound. So for example, if you had element A plus element B gives you compound AB. Here are some examples of synthesis reactions. So a very common one would be sodium plus chlorine. And if you guess that the product would be sodium chloride, you would be right. Notice that we have a metal and we have a nonmetal. That's very typical of a synthesis reaction. And then we're always going to get sodium chloride. And then I emphasized in yellow that you're going to change the ending of the nonmetal to IDE. Notice the formula, excuse me, notice the, the words are still written as metal and nonmetal as well. Here's another example, magnesium plus phosphorus. Magnesium plus phosphorus would give you, again, magnesium phosphide. So just to emphasize, you want to always change the ending of the nonmetal to IDE. And then finally, you had sulfur plus aluminum. Notice aluminum is the metal and sulfur is the nonmetal, so you're going to get aluminum sulfide. A decomposition reaction is a compound that breaks down into elements and or smaller compounds. So for example, the common form would be compound, a yield sign, element plus element. So AB yields A plus B. Here's an example. Potassium nitride decomposes into, if you guessed potassium plus nitrogen, emphasizing, again, you're changing the, um, the ide back to the original element name, you would be correct. Make sure that you always go back to the nonmetal's original ending. Here are some examples of special decompositions. So if you had, for example, a metal chlorate, and it decomposes into a metal chloride and oxygen. Again, we've been talking about patterns. This is another pattern. Anytime chemists saw that we had a metal chlorate we, and they heated it, they always saw that what was left was a metal chloride and oxygen was released. So here's an example. Chlorate is ClO3 with a minus 1. I think you can kind of see it makes sense that you're going to break it up into a metal chloride and oxygen just by the fact that chlorate is ClO3. So if you had barium chlorate, so this is an example of a metal chlorate. It's going to break down into a metal chloride and oxygen. So just change the word metal into barium. So it's going to be barium chloride plus oxygen. This is always going to be part of the product. Here's another example. A metal carbonate and a metal oxide will give you carbon dioxide. Excuse me, a metal carbonate will break down to give you a metal oxide and carbon dioxide. So a carbonate is CO3 with a minus 2 charge. So for example, if you had potassium carbonate, that is always going to break down into potassium oxide plus carbon dioxide. And that is always going to be part of the product. The only thing that will change is the name of the metal that is with it. The third type of special decomposition is a metal hydroxide. When that decomposes, it will break down into a metal oxide and water. Hydroxide is OH with a minus one charge. So here's an example. Tin 4 hydroxide. 
So 10,4 hydroxide, again, is going to break down into the metal oxide. So in this case, it'll be 10,4 oxide and water. You do want to make sure that you bring the Roman numeral along because it is not going to change oxidation state, so bring it with it. Also, the oxide in the water is always part of the product. Hopefully, this has helped you to predict the products of both synthesis and decomposition reactions. Hopefully, you notice that they're really just opposite each other. Thank you so much for watching.